So this is the one cost exultant. Like I have venerable piggy bank on this. I've never taken it, I think, on this exalted setup. Oh, but I figured yeah. it was just a shit ton of econ. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a lot of econ. Because that was comparing it to, let's say, an augment like patient study or mm -hmm. epic. Epic is six XP and two rerolls. So that's like 10 gold per stage, right? Or patient study, if you lose every fight per stage, that's 15 gold. Whereas for this, I'm going to get five gold per loss, right? That's like patient study, but it's two for a win and five for a loss. So I was basically treating it like patient study on crack. And I was like, okay, screw whatever the, the exalted is like here. So if this is your game plan, then you strictly have to follow the game plan, right? Which means that come level eight, there should probably not be a single exalted trade active. Right. I feel like it's almost like I'm could probably committing to like a three cost reroll or fast nine. Yeah, Maybe like yeah. the Kaisa board. In general, Kaisa board is probably your best bet in these spots. It's the most consistent. You could go fast nine, but overall, it's a little bit difficult to get fast nine. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I, I had a shit ton of gold this game and I mm -hmm. feel like I would, there was a point like you, we talked about earlier, where I was like trying to decide between reroll and and fast night, and I wasn't sure what to do. So we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get to that. But basically, the game plan right now is just lose streak, get five gold a turn. Yeah, but you know, if you're trying to lose streak, like here, you can probably afford to make ten somehow. Yeah, that's good. Is there any way to make twenty? It's kind of crazy how much gold this gives you. <laughs> yeah, it does give you a lot. It gives you a lot. And then I was like, oh, I could just gain more health to exchange for gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think the gaining health is very reasonable in this spot. It's almost like I'm playing fortune, kind of. Yeah, one, one big thing that I will mention here is you should be thinking about your item slams just to mitigate some of the health loss. I think that... If you can get away with killing like one or two units per round, it's going to work in your favor. Here, what I would highly recommend is to take the Triss because Kogoko is one of the exalted units. If you, for example, were to play, like if you're already playing Lose Streak and you can fit both the exalted and the fortune on your board, and that's how you're going to play the game, you're essentially going to win out. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens here. You can take the Triss, which is good. And then hopefully... And then we'll try to find Fortune. Yeah. Yeah, there was, I think, a Zoe, but because I took the life. Well, I get the Zoe anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good anyways. So, I mean, if you can do it... Yeah, this is, this is really solid. I, I think you're probably doing this to keep Lost Streak, which is, you know, perfectly reasonable... If you think you can get away with losing the round with the Malphite on the board, I would probably recommend, you know, having it there. But it's a matter of if you can do that. If you can't, then it's probably not worth it. But it's fine as is. So, like, in some of these situations, you might be thinking about, like, can you get away with, like, slamming it at even Shroud, uh, something like that. But other than that, I mean, this is this is perfectly fine, I think. Overall, I wouldn't say there's anything that seems too off with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you should be in a, like in this spot. You should be in a good good position to just win win out. So this is where I think I'm getting super baited. So okay. now I'm like, oh, I could go <laughs> go three star volley and Triss, and I already have oh. the Triss. Oh, okay, yeah. So so yeah. here's here's the thing: you can keep the volley on your board, and that's very good for mitigating health loss but you have to consider what your items are and what your mm -hmm. game plan is right with this much econ it really doesn't it's not going to benefit you too much to play for reroll so i'm also getting baited by this plug <laughs> yeah the duelist crest for sure like here right? like gifts from the fallen would be amazing with level yeah Gifts from the Fallen is great. You know, I, I would probably just reroll the Ascension. 
but you know, Duelist Crest is something where you have to like look at your items, right? You have to mm -hmm. evaluate what your items look like. And can you realistically play Duelist? I mean, honestly, you could probably also just play a really crack Duelist board here. You have Volley 2, you have Duelist Crest. I mean, you could get away with it. I have Hodge and half the Titans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's doable. It's definitely doable. So then I get this. Um, uh, <laughs> oh. Okay, I actually think Gar Okay, let me let me let me just see what decision you make here. I, I think if you're going to end up playing Duelist, you should take Duelist Crest. Uh, uh I think in vertical duelist, duelist crest is better than Gargantuan. Because uh, a duelist is better than the benefit of the 40 to 25 stacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you would still roll at level 7 to hit the volley and Trist before going for the 8 duelist. I, I mean, from your we spot... Go level eight and roll? From your spot, I think it's even doable to just go 9. Like, with this... Go 9? And yeah, you can go oh, 9. Oh, just go just volley 2. Irelia. You, you only... Because if you're playing 8 duelists, all you really need is one Irelia. That's going to carry your board for, like, the entirety of the game. You don't even need Trist... Three, yeah, you don't you don't three. need Trist three or Volley three. You just need one. Like if you can get to Aurelia with eight duelists, you know you're gonna be playing what seven of your units are gonna actually be actual duelists. You're gonna have a spat, so you can do something like you can get Sage in right. If you have Wukong plus Diana, then you're gonna be in a great spot, right? If you're rerolling, so the the awkward part is when you're doing these types of econ or are you doing like these type of high econ strategies? With the fortune and the and and the small piggy right? bank, yeah. the venerable piggy bank. If I decide to reroll on top of that, right? The problem with that is reroll spikes once I hit the three cost, three star, three cost, right? Mm -hmm. Before then, even if I've cashed out something ridiculous, if I haven't hit the three star yet. My board is still not gonna be relatively strong compared to the rest of the law. That's the awkward um, part. If you try to pivot something like fortune, or you try to pivot something like you know, in the same sense, the the venerable piggy bank into some type of reroll board, you're introducing way too much variance into your strategy because you're already gonna be low health. And yeah. you're going to be delaying your spike even longer, right? Uh, so pushing if, levels is just lower variance to make sure your board's stronger. Yeah, yeah. Like you're pushing levels and, you know, the biggest spike that you can get if you take Duelists is with the Irelia on level 8 slash with the age mm -hmm. range. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, Gargantuan, I would say, is probably the least valuable thing here. Because you're sort of locking yourself into playing two care like two specific carries. Oh, that's so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you're I think part you're... of part of what I was thinking was I, I was trying to think I going for Jin, so I I'm probably gonna try to go for I, I forget how many more rounds of fortune I had, but I was like thinking I need to stabilize my HP and that like getting gargantuan with Volley in would stabilize me earlier, but I guess I wasn't thinking that that would stabilize me less in like stage four and maybe yeah yeah five. yeah yeah well we, we can see how it plays out you know i'm it, it just depends on how strong you manage to get post cash out right um, and then i was also just I, I feel like i've been burned so many times slamming items with fortune because i'm like still not great at measuring like board strength that i've just not slamming <laughs> Yeah, because volley mean, sometimes seems like he could go like infinite. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think Titan's volley here can be a bit scary, so I, I think it's perfectly fine to not slam. Uh, and then this guy's yeah. all just also just called duelist. Yeah, yeah. And so, so this is the problem, right? If you're actually consistent, then your 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 probability of like really capping out. It's going to go like way, way down, right? Because in the late yeah. game, if you're still with a volley two with tight, then you're, you're still not going to, you're, you're potentially going to just lose rounds, right? With a volley two. Um, yeah. 
The good thing is that he went seven with like, he has very little econ and three volleys. And I have, I think I have like a hundred gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have plenty of gold. That's, that's the good part here. So, the, and you know, I don't have the fortune cash on it. If you manage to get to, if you manage to get to the volley three, I still think that it could be a very successful game. So let's just see how this goes. Overall, not too bad, I think. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So two rounds. So you're sacking up until rounds in. Unfortunately, there wasn't a bow. Yeah. And and this is like a bit of the awkward part, right? Is you, I'd say that if, I, if I'm looking at these items, it's not the greatest for duelists. Uh, mm -hmm. In general, like if you don't have the proper duelist items... Like you have the one Titans, you would you would like another Titans. You probably want to slam the the even shroud, right? And then go for like an IE or something for the for the Triss. But you're like it's pretty far off. And like yeah, again, if you're gonna be playing Duelist, you might as well take Duelist Bat instead. It's just like a way way higher. Okay, so got I was this. hoping I get Duelist here. <laughs> huh. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 quite. I mean, that's fine. That's a fine take. You're re you're rolling here. So my my worry is that at a certain point, you're essentially just gonna burn through all of this gold, and you might not hit the volley still, just because that guy has three mm -hmm. of them. And and yeah, here's the thing: is like at this so I point, scouted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I scouted, yeah. and he pushed. He pushed eight, so he gave up okay. on our roll for volley. Yeah, yeah. But like at, at this point, you know, you're going to have to hit the volley and then you're going to have to... Even even with the volley three, you're probably still going to need probably a little bit more, like a Triss three. But but this is fine for now, I think. You, you, like, I think you just need a Lee Sin. Evan Shroud, that's good. Oh, oh yeah, I would definitely go for Shred here. Uh, oh, for... Okay. Yeah, that's like... Up until... Up until you have Irelia, it's like if you have Irelia, then you don't really need the shred. But if you don't have her, it's kind of necessary to win rounds. I was, it just okay, yeah. I guess I was thinking that Volley was like most of my damage, but I guess surprisingly, Trist oftentimes does more damage than Volley. Yeah, she does more. Like the thing about melee carries is they're somewhat inconsistent. So you you do want something that enables a back carry that's why i think like duelist a lot of the strength comes from the fact that you have Triss as a carry but I, i'd say that she's probably like the primary carry a lot mm. of times when i play duelist i'll just slam straight paint on the volley because if he gets cc he actually can't do much so you need some kind of you know consistent backline carry to output most of the dps yeah yeah Okay, that makes sense. And then here, either keepers or you know, find resistance, just get yeah, more tankiness. Yeah, yeah, I, either of those are fine. I guess given that the volley has the two Titans, keepers might be slightly better. I think I'd pick Unified, but what's your thought uh, between the two of those? I mean, on, Unified is good as long as you have the six duelists already. Because when uh, they have the damage reduction, you know, any tank stats in addition to that is like, very good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, keepers is also fine but I think especially if you're playing stick duelist unified is it might be a bit more value probably would have to look at the stats but my guess would that be that it probably is a bit more consistent okay especially if I have healing on my yeah on yeah Tris. yeah and okay, if you have something sense. like if you have something like sage in then it's very easy to put Tris like front row and then you're good to go right mm -hmm. oh I wait where did I go I think Harvestus is also fine. Okay. okay. What's your thought on my leveling here versus rolling down? I, I think leveling is all right. I would probably like to see... I would like to see rolling for the volley three first if you think you can reliably hit it. Because mm -hmm. the odds... Are, like Now, with the odds changes from set 10 to set 11... You, you're you, you're actually significantly better off rolling on seven to hit the three stars, right? Uh, it's just a minor thing. But if you think you can hit it here, then that's fine. Uh, 
the, the problem is you no longer have that econ generation, right? From the right. piggy bank. So if you're not winning, like, I think if you lose any of the next four rounds, the game is essentially over. That's how okay. I would kind of see it from this spot. You know, we can see how it plays out. Okay. I think the other guy still only has like three volleys or four volleys. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're winning rounds, then it's not too bad. It's just like you have to, in these spots, you have to hit, right? You're essentially mm. leaving the game in a state where you have like the specific out, which is to hit the three three stars. Otherwise, you know, it's not great. But this, this is good. Getting the Wukong is very solid. Yeah, that's definitely strongest board. You can slam a hurricane. I, I think, honestly, if, if you see that people are strong in your rotation, it's probably worth all inning here. And that's fine. This is pretty much... Yeah, that's the full board. So now I think the question is, do I go nine or do I roll for this three? Yeah, yeah. I think this many Chris, you're probably better off pushing levels because you already have... Oh, you sold a Rakan. Yeah, I, I think it's probably better off to... Was Rakan better than Wukong? No, no, I would I would just keep it as like a next... Oh, just game. hold it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So just take like... Because that could be like five gold across, you know, five rounds, right? But like whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, your board is like already pretty strong, right? So at, at the end of the day, you know, the thing is once you level, you have to have something to play, right? It's not enough to level. You you have to have a next in. Otherwise, there's no point in pushing the levels because you've already hit your, you know, your main unit, you know. But I guess I, guess I just figured there's like, I could hit any dragon lord or sage and it's like pretty safe. To get one yeah, of yeah. Well, I th I think Rakan is like significantly better than whatever else mm -hmm. you could hit, right? And right. the fact that you already have it is pretty pretty solid. In this spot, I, I think Trickster's Glass is probably the best option. Um, yeah, yeah. Because like the the big thing here is yeah, we we can see which option you take here. But in general, Anima Visage isn't great in this spot just because she's not actually like a main tank. Uh, yeah, I kind of figured that out later. She, she just dies so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So just like more effective health on the board is probably going to help you out a, a lot better. Yeah. Um, That's where if I had Unified Resistances, I think it would have made her a lot better too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I this spot still seems fine. I don't think that anything looks like it could end up going too poorly. I would probably recommend like pushing levels because if you can get these items on Irelia too instead of Chris, you're probably like mm. you've probably just won the lobby. I think this is where I was just like not that well versed in duelist. I feel like I've I've played duelist a lot and primarily won with Volley Three and Tris Three, and I always forget Irelia is like the late game out. Mm -hmm. Here I would have liked to see Sunfire. Instead of the guard, uh, or instead of the uh, bramble vest, I think Do you have any form of healing reduction. No, I don't. I think I was looking at the lobby, and there were a ton of Kaisa like Zaya players, and not. Yeah, I think there was yeah, only that's... one Yone player. Yeah, that's that's true. But I, I think uh, in general, healing reduction has a lot of value. Uh, I think in the current set. And it's it works not just against the Yone, it helps against Galios to get through Galios. Things like that. Things like, you know, even here, right? Against against Bard with the Gunblade, Morello's is like a lot of, this is like yeah. a lot of value. But I mean, it looks like you're doing pretty good. I thought I was in a position to like win out, but obviously yeah. no, I'm I, I, I do think this. this. <laughs> I do <laughs> think this that was a strong position. I guess it just comes down to like, yeah, I'm very, I'm very interested to see what happens like the rest of this game because I don't think. And so now I just... only need three more Triss. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 awkward. I think that yeah, thinking that much gold into trying to reroll Triss in this spot is it's just less consistent, especially because you've already pushed the level, and you know. I just think in general, Irelia is a 
better unit than Trist is. Especially like Aurelia 2 hard. is not that much worse than Trist 3. Yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, I think Aurelia 2 is better than Trist 3. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. just It's just that she has backline access and uh, doesn't. Uh, uh -huh. So in like a front to back, Aurelia is always going to be stronger than Trist is. Okay. Okay, so do you, I think you should win this, right? Oh. Oh no! So I needed the healing reduction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here, here, like the, the the thing is, you actually really can't afford to lose rounds here, right? Yeah. So if if this if you think the strongest person in the lobby or one of the strongest people in the lobby is the is the Yone player, then you you need to have some way to deal with that, right? So not having mm -hmm. the healing reduction, essentially, if you get matched up against them one more time, you've lost, right? You're dead. Yeah, yeah. I sunk a decent amount of gold trying to roll a little bit at E, which probably made it much harder for me to find Aurelia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here you're probably you can sell you can sell the the Lee Sins, for example. I think Lee Sin three is not going to uh, be much for you. Uh, it's just like about <laughs> keeping your econ and like how are you supposed to get your like what is a realistic way to get your board stronger, right? So like mm -hmm. Lee Sin three probably not as good as. Probably not as good as, or not as consistent as hitting your legendary upgrades. And yeah, I, I would prefer the Rakan over the Morg here. What it boils down to is like unit quality and you actually need more than two Sage healing, right? And I don't think that uh -huh. the two Sage, three Sage makes that big of a difference compared to just unit quality and the additional like Dragon Lord buff that, he called that, that the Rakan would give you. Yeah, so I I mean top four like in this spot I think top four is wait how much gold did you did, okay so you just ended I up died with fifty gold yeah yeah because yeah, I didn't expect the lose yeah 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 I mean that's that's a little bit off. yeah but you know if you're on one life you're probably gonna have to send it just to, to as a sort of insurance policy here but yeah I mean a uh -huh. couple of things that I would really say are pretty big. One is just recognizing what what makes the board stronger. Morg, I think, definitely not a great unit in general, but you know, she's definitely not as good as Rakan would be here. If you had the extra gold to roll for the Irelia, you know, it's gonna be a lot stronger. You I'm just swap out the Trist for a Aurelia one or Trist two is probably better than Aurelia one. Well, I would I would still keep the Trist two. If I hit Aurelia two, okay. then I would swap the items. The problem with Aurelia one is sometimes she'll just die. Like if you're yeah. fighting the Yone player and it just jumps on your Irelia, then like that's a lot of your item value that's just gone. So in that's in that in those scenarios, you know, it's probably more worth it to keep them on the Trist just so that she can live a bit longer. Uh, yeah, but just some, some minor things, right? Like, I, I think the big thing, especially, like, if I'm thinking about how you lost this particular fight, right? What does it boil down to? What it comes down to, like, the last two fights that you lost are because you don't have the two most important things in the game, right? Which is healing reduction and shred. Yeah. Right, and does, like, does that make sense? It's, it's you know, yeah, it, it's yeah, kind yeah. of funny, but like, a lot of the times, you just need to ask yourself, like, those those are straight up the two most important things in the game. So that's why you kind of have to like prioritize them in a sense, right? Like, obviously, with Duelist, Shred is not that it's not too big of a deal because you might be able to get Irelia on your board, but if you don't have Irelia on your board, you're not going to have any Shred. So, like, if we look at how this fight plays out, right? We can look at how this fight plays out. What's happening here, a lot of your damage is getting sunk into this anti. Look at how long it takes for this anti to die. Yeah. Right? So, like, you're just... I don't even think she dies the entire fight. How much healing does any... I feel like a lot of it is the shielding, too, from Janna. Well, yeah, a lot of it is the shielding. But the bigger thing is that gargoyles... Just the gargoyles. Oh, plus yeah, the yeah. guard. That's the biggest thing. That's why you lost this fight, right? Is because okay. it took you so long to get through this Annie 
that you couldn't get to the backline with your, you know, your, your backline DPS. So oh, if you yeah. had the shred here, you could actually get through the any in a reasonable amount of time because it, you know, it doesn't really look like this board should be that much stronger than what you have, right? Yeah. But without the shred, without the healing reduction, it actually becomes pretty significant. And it's the same thing with like the Yone board, right? You know, the primary reason why you lose to Yone is just because you don't have that healing reduction. So he can, you know, he can go infinite. And I think the Yone board did have a Morello. That's why they beat you in a one on one, is just because even though you're both playing like these super scaling late, like these super scaling Titans frontline carries, they have the damage reduction. You don't have the damage reduction. So they actually just end up winning the matchup, even though you have more resources than them, right? Um, so yeah, that's just the big thing. Honestly, I actually don't even think the game plan here was that bad. Like, you know, getting the volley three, you know, with the double titans, it's ended up working out. And that's, you know, everything that I said before is actually pretty minor compared to what I'm talking to you, like talking to you about now, which is, is actually what I think is probably why you could have placed better is straight up just two items. Two items would have, <laughs> you know, made this game a first compared to a fourth, right? Yeah. And actually, I didn't even realize, I, I always thought Bali was mainly AP, but he, he was like more than half of his damage is Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, especially if you have the double Titans on him, a oh, lot of his damage yeah. ends up being AD damage. Uh, that, okay. that's, that's the big thing. It's like, it's it's not just him being mixed damage. You have to think about like overall your board is primarily AD, right? All like right. a lot of your main duelists are going to benefit from the thread. Uh so you know, I think that in general, like most you'll see most people when they're playing duelists, they're going to have like last whisper tris, right? Even though later on you can get Irelia. That's like a big it, right? That's only after you've hit Irelia so yeah. on the shred, which is why you need the shred initially. Otherwise, you're going to end up in these spots where you're just stuck on front line for like, you know, for the entire fight. And then you're not going to be able, to, you know, like what, what happens here, right? And actually, I had four, like 50 gold at level nine. I, like if I rolled that gold, odds are I hit one Irelia, replace yeah, the Yasuo, yeah. and I get yeah, the shred. Yeah, definitely. And I, I honestly think you might have been able to get away with like keeping all of your gold here and greeting a little bit if you had those items. Because then right. you probably win the Yone fight and you probably win this fight, right? So like, you know, there are all these minor, like, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've talked about here is actually relatively minor compared to like, you know, this is why we go Too back to my review. There are a lot of hypotheticals we can debate whether or not one direction is better than the other direction but at the mm. end of the day if you can pinpoint okay this is the biggest reason why you lost then everything else is like you know we can we can worry about all that other stuff later there are some minor optimizations but this is like the big thing right it's just two items probably could have won you the entire the entire game right uh yeah. i could have made yeah. basically what you're saying is i could have made day three if i didn't because I, I was like right on the bubble. So I think if I got first in this game, I probably could have made day three. That yeah, yeah. The difference yeah. of these two items. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a I mean it's a big, big difference though. Like Yeah. I there, the frustrating some... part is I actually could have built the Sunfire, right? Like you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And then if I just definitely. rolled here to get the Aurelia, I had all the pieces in play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's it's very important to like you know, there are some things that I think that people will always prioritize, like, if you're watching any streams, right, everybody will have some form of healing reduction. Everybody will have some form of shred. If you don't have Kale on your board, then you either need Evan Shroud, you need Irelia, you need a Last Whisper, you need a Spark, you need a Shiv, right? I think that whenever you have your carry items set, you're like, okay, these are all the carry items I got. I don't need anything else. Every last component that you get, you have to start thinking about how does this build into either spread or how does this build into healing reduction, right? 
So, you know, think you just th think about the cost that you're playing. Like if I'm playing Kog'Ma, right? After I build my Kog'Ma items, I need Shred, right? Healing reduction, less important. I have, you know, Kogath for that, right? If I'm playing Janna, like this person, I don't think they have healing reduction actually, but they do because on the Janna board, you have Zyra and you have Annie and those both give you those give you the healing reduction, right? And that's good mm -hmm. enough in most cases. Uh, but if you don't have that, then it's pretty important that you do get it. And maybe it's less important in certain, certain metas as things start to fall off. Like if everything ends up becoming front and back, you know, then the priority becomes more important on Shred compared to like healing reduction, right? But, you know, nowadays, right, if everybody's playing Yone and everybody's playing Duelist with Volley Bear, right, and everybody has like a Galio 2 or something in their front line or like a Redemption Shen 3, right, I don't have healing mm -hmm. reduction. I'm not winning those fights, right? And in a lot of cases, if I don't have, like, even Shred, right? Like, if I don't have Shred, a lot of the times, Shred makes the difference between killing a Yone and not killing a Yone, right? Because they're still stacking stacking those resistances once the Titan's fully stacked, right? So, two very important things in fight. Probably the most important is just having some, some form one way or another, right? Uh, if you can get those... That's probably like, you know, most important. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, okay. yeah, I, I actually think it's less so like, I, I actually really like this line that you ended up playing here in the sense, like, sure, th there are the hypotheticals. Maybe you don't hit, maybe you don't hit the volley three. If that other person has like slightly more volleys, if they had six instead of three, you might have been in a much worse spot. But, yeah. you know, you still hit the volley three and that's and all that. But, you know, th there can be slight optimizations in that sense. But the most important thing here is that it's just the way the fights played it, played out, right? And it's, you know, there's the matter of you spending gold, you rolling for Triss. But those are way, way less important than the most important thing, which is, you know, shred healing reduction. Just like. Yeah, every single time, every time, right? Okay, so let's say I had won this battle. I have 50 gold. Like, I guess part of it is seeing when I'm playing against that Yone guy again because I need healing reduction before I get to that point. But if I feel like I'm strong enough I, and I can greed, like, I, I feel like either way I'm rolling at nine, right? To get Aurelia, I, either Aurelia two or Tris three. Like, that would be... yeah. The, the next game plan yeah so i mean you have you actually have a couple options one is you could go 10 and somehow if you get exalted you can play exalted on 10 and that's actually like very very strong right you can roll to hit some legendary upgrades like you can get recon 2 irelia 2 wukong 2 are all very very good for this board so you have a few options there right and and honestly it's just the correct decision boils down to whatever has the highest expected value and whatever you're like most likely to hit. And, you know, it might not be, it's probably not too easy to completely do that math out in your head. But I mean, like you're real, you're pretty realistically expected to hit one of the five, one of the five cost upgraded rolling the gold on level nine, right? It okay. doesn't necessarily have to be Irelia, but Rapan 2 is very good. Wukong 2 is very good. Plus, you get more heavenly stats. They're both fine. If you think you're strong enough, then yeah, it's perfectly okay to go 10 as well. Right? There, there are a lot of options there. You could play. You don't even have to play Exalted. You can play something like Soraka, right? You can play Soraka plus, plus Rakan. And that's, that's honestly probably what, you know, that's actually probably stronger than Exalted even. But, you know, that there, there are ways to cap out the board further. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's per, you know, those, those are, you have plenty of options available to you with this gold, right? But yeah. The other it's, thing was yeah. back at the, what was it, the 3-2 augment. Like, 
if let's say the other, I think it was Cambuay had, let's say he did have six volleys or something. I don't think I would have tried to go to a list in which case I probably, I think the game plan at that point would have been just go Kaisa or fast nine. Like you think that mm -hmm. still would have been viable. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is like, look at, look at how much gold you have, right? Like at the point where you cashed out, cashed out of fortune, I think you had like a stupid amount of gold, you know, some like 90 something. Yeah, I had like 95 gold when I was looking at. Yeah. And if you have that much gold at that point in the game, I then probably just go fast nine and you, you can over you can go, you can go you. fast nine on a stable board. You can really do whatever you want. 80 gold. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, that was gold. After I rolled. Yeah, I think you rolled a decent amount here, right? Because you already have seven volley bears. But yeah, like look at look at this spot. I think like three six is when you cash out, right? Okay, yeah. So like, let's just see what happens here. Yeah, I was so, already rolling a bunch. <laughs> so I've probably had like ninety or hundred gold or something. Yeah, like you had a stupid like you could go you could go level eight on four one with. With a hundred, you probably have a hundred gold there, and there's no <laughs> way you don't hit something with a hundred gold, right? That's so there, that probably would have been the higher EV play, right? It's just go go nine and just go legendaries. Yeah, yeah, I think going nine four legendaries is for sure. Higher Especially with I think one of the augment choices was like was wasn't it like Stan United or something? I forget. You had like you had I think you had. What is the one where the units die and they give stats? Oh, gifts from the fallen. Yeah, that would yeah, have been. Yeah, I so think good. you had that one. Yeah, it would have been great, right? I mean, but honestly, if you, when you, I think in this spot specifically, you can really play whatever you want, right? I, I think, right? In most situations, the 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 awkward part, like obviously, it worked out and you did hit the volley bear. But if you didn't hit the volley bear, that's the only way that it could have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. right? And going back to the original prompts that, like, kind of you had mentioned is, I'm, you know, our last coaching session was talking about fast nine, and I've been, mm -hmm. but I think the last time we were talking about it was mostly AP from the last patch, and I hadn't yeah. really played much fast nine AD, and so that's where the lack of experience, and then of course the volley drop. With the volley two i was just like oh this is the duelist line is like a line i'm very familiar with like i've seen it do well in this tournament i've seen it just oh, yeah, know yeah, how to no, pilot yeah it. definitely but I think, I think gifts from the fallen would have just it seemed like it given how much gold i had the eb would have just been so much higher and i the thing is i would have had to like kind of figure it out as i went yeah yeah i mean i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest here i actually think from your spot the highest, highest cap is actually just the Duelist Crest. Uh, because with Duelist Crest, you don't have to rely on something like rolling for volley three in order to cap out your board. So that's the big, you can still play the fast night play style with Duelist Crest because a Duelist, like just like look at the stats, right? Like yeah. compare that to the rest of these, right? It's, it's so much better. And it's just because eight duelists in crate is like so disgusting, right? So as yeah. long as you, I mean, you you definitely had enough gold to like take that, go nine, find one Irelia, and just win the game, right? That's the big. And I guess but, like, even if I haven't played much eight duelists, that's like super easy to pilot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like eight duelists is straight up just eight duelists on your board, and then a Wukong, and that's you're done, right? Okay. I, I think that, you know, what it really, you know, the, I do think that's the highest cap. So if you wanted to play for like a really strong board, that's what I would say is like your best bet. Because in the, honestly, in this spot, you can really do whatever you want. You know, as again, when you have this much gold, what it really comes down to is you're going to be able to hit the units you need. You're going to be able to level whenever you want. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is how are you going to win fight? Because I could have, you know, Kaisa too. I could have Saya too. I could have Galio as well. 
But if I don't have, you know, tank, I if I don't have the shred, the healing reduction, and like decent tank items, it really doesn't matter, right? right? Uh, that's not going to make a difference. I could have all the gold in, in the world if I don't itemize properly, then you know you're still gonna lose fights, right? But no, right. In here, I I I still say gold's crest probably the best thing to go, especially because you have the volley too. You know, you have a lot of gold. You just push levels. You get you get Irelia, and in general, like for the eighty line, I would definitely consider Irelia to be like your best option as a late game eighty carry. Zaya is also quite good now that they buffed her, but Irelia is always going to be like one of the most consistent. And yeah, like eight duelists is just super super duper strong. But you know, honestly, all of these off the the, the augment choice here. Probably less important, what I would say. Right. Stay. Okay. Point taken. Make sure I always have healing reduction and shred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and make this mistake again. You, you, you really can just. You know, there are those few units that give you those, as as their default ability, right? And mm -hmm. in those, it's, those are like the special cases where you, if you're playing Story Weaver, right? Those are the instances. It's mainly what Zyra, Cho, and Yone in this set. Zyra Cho, Yonin yeah, is not not the greatest because he uh, doesn't really spread it that well. Uh, like a lot of you'll see people whenever they're playing Yone, they'll still build Morellos on like you know a lot of the times you'll see Morello Kindred because Yone will apply it to just the single unit that he's hitting after I think it's only after his ability, right? Double check this. Although most of your damage occurs with Yone, right? So then it's okay if he, if it's applying the healing reduction to the unit that he's hitting? Wounding enemies along the way. I wouldn't say it's that straightforward. The main thing is like if you're playing Yone, right? He's not going to be applying it a lot of the times to like the most important frontline units that need the reduction. So it's very easy if I build a Morello to control for who the Morello is applied on, right? Because I can just stick that unit in front of whoever I want to be, to, you know, to be healing reduced. And for the most part, it's going to be applied. Same thing with like Annie. I can just stick Annie in front of whoever I need it to, to do that. And it'll be good. Most of the time when you're positioning Yone, right? You're positioning Yone to snipe out backline carries. And when that happens, his healing reduction act loses a lot of the value. Because you're not positioning Yone to be like, okay, I want you right here so you can apply healing reduction to this particular yeah. unit, right? And the the thing is, even when it, like, maybe when it comes down to a one, one on one, it'll start to get a little bit of value. But the, the thing is, if you're not getting the healing reduction at the start of the fight, that's when it's actually the most important. Um, because otherwise, they're allowed to drain tank for the majority of the fight, which means that you've that you've let them get away with getting a whole bunch of healing in before you apply the healing reduction, which is which is pretty bad, right? Mm -hmm. Ideally, you get the healing reduction as soon as possible on the unit so that they're out of the fight immediately, versus you know in a one on one. Like if I'm doing Yone versus Volley Bear, if I've let this Volley Bear reach the end game with full health, in a one-on-one, -on -one, Volley Bear is still going to beat Yone because he has CC built into his kit, right? Mm -hmm. So I could have the healing reduction. That's not going to do anything. If I have the healing reduction on him at the start of the fight, he'll probably be dead by the time it gets to the end. I don't have to worry about the one-on-one, -on -one, right? Because he wouldn't have healed up the full. And that that's like the thing is, yeah, in general, you just want to get it as soon as possible. And that's why okay. Yone's is kind of fake, but Annie's, Zyra's, all pretty decent. Zyra's a little bit inconsistent just with the way her targeting is. You might not get it as easily on some of the units that you'd like to, and she's kind of frail, so she might just die. But yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Any other kind of big picture, high level takeaways that stood out to you? Or, um, I mean, I think the big one that you definitely hammered home that I'm taking away is 
Always mm-hmm. make sure I've had healing reduction in thread. Um, yeah, and then yeah. I think at a lesser degree, the dualist crest being the higher cap. Um, yeah, yeah. Any yeah. other? Yeah, I, I think takeaways. Overall, like I, I think the game was good. I, I just think, yeah, just like a, those, like it's, a, it's like it seems like it's, it's funny that that's like the most important thing, but it actually, it's, it actually is. I, I think in terms of other takeaways, like. Honestly, I think the line was good. Like what you did here, maybe the variance was a little bit too high for what I would think would allow you to go first here in the Mm -hmm. sense that, you know, when you're playing for re-roll in particular, this is like a, this is like a minor, this is a more minor thing is if you're playing these high econ strategies, re-roll is in general less of high well it it might be a high it's equally high cap but it might not be the variance is a lot higher yeah the variance is a lot higher because not only do you have the cash you have to hit in a timely manner right so if you you know you take the titans augment right you take gargantuan here and you are stuck with the volley bear three for the rest of the game, or the Volibear 2 for like a majority of the game, you're actually going to be dead a lot sooner, right? Mm-hmm. And you know you're going to be low health, right? You're, you know, you essentially start playing the game at 30 health, right? If that's going to be the case, I think a lot of the times I tend to avoid playing for reroll. And like, I've, I've done this a lot of times where, you know, I'll cash out whatever the econ trade is and try to play reroll. If you're not in a spot to like realistically hit and here, like you, you had like somewhat decent odds, but again, if other guy has six volleys, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of screwed because it's, you don't have, you know, you don't have like a lesser champion duplicator to kind of really make it easier on yourself. Mm-hmm. And so if you miss, you, you're, you're, you're essentially done because you can't really get too much stronger. So that's, that's just that. I think that, you know, that's why tending to go like for a strong level eight call for a fast nine tend to be a bit more consistent in these situations. That's just like in general, what I think the better line is because it's a lot easier to hit like upgraded two cost or four cost two star upgrade than it is to try to reroll for a three star three cost. Just in terms of the odds, you know, pushing levels, you're going to get a lot of four cost upgrades anyways, right? And, you know, the unit quality until you hit the three star is going to be a lot higher. So that's just the main thing. I, I think that if you can kind of lean more in that direction, it's probably better. But, you know, here you hit and I, I think you were in a decent spot to hit. I'm not too sure how certain you were in terms of the spot you were in to hit, but you know, you did. And so that's, you know, that, that ended up working out and what it boiled down to is just the itemization. But yeah, that's, that's sort of what I, I think in terms of like thought the econ lines, like, uh, you know, fortune okay. tend to want to be level eight post cash out is what I say. Unless you're like saying, oh, I'm just going to sack a bit. I'll be 50 health and I'll roll on seven immediately, like on three or something, right? That mm-hmm. sometimes you can do fortune that way, but you do want to have like a bit higher health because, you know, again, not three star in the unit makes it very difficult to win later fights. Okay, cool. Thanks for the coaching session. And I hopefully will be able to take this takeaway and, and be able to do a lot better in my game. So I appreciate it. Nice. Yeah. Just remember Morello's and what is Sunfire Cape and Red Buff. The, the yeah. best items in the game. 